Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Mona Virgili, and thank you for watching. We start the show this week with good news for MCPS. County Council entered into an agreement to fully fund the school's $2.3 billion budget. Susan Kennedy has a story. Susan? Lorna, the agreement between the Council and Montgomery County Public Schools gives the schools their entire budget request for this year. And the funds come at a critical point when officials say they want to address the achievement gap. Making sure that we can address the needs of the school system, uh, and meeting the needs of the taxpayers as well. So. The council will fund the $2.3 billion school budget, which is more than $51 million over the maintenance of effort. However, the formula the council is using will not trigger the state law that would require those funds be built into next year's minimum funding. The plan is the work of Council President Craig Rice. That is the recommendation of the Education Committee. Who said giving the schools the full amount of their requests gives them the ability to address the ever-growing needs of the system. You know, we have tremendous challenges that are facing us, including a persistent achievement gap uh, that we wanted to address, as well as we heard from many parents who are concerned about the continuation of MCPS's ability to innovate and go beyond where we are right now, but continue to remain competitive. The plan funds the school's request by repurposing excess reserves from the current retiree health benefits while protecting support for future benefits in the council's fiscal plan. Council has developed this plan. In the proposal also fully funds the the board's fiscal year 15 technology modernization request in both the operating and capital budgets. Uh, it still protects all of the uh, agency requirements, and so it still protects Montgomery County from a fiscally sound standpoint, um, but again, allows us the flexibility to be able to make sure that those needed resources are there for our Montgomery County Public Schools. School Superintendent Dr. Joshua Starr says this budget gives the schools the funds they need to do the work the county expects. It's about building the systems we need to prepare kids for a very different world. Jobs are changing every year, you know, there are new jobs every year. And we know that we have a community with kids that have a lot of needs. There are long standing gaps. And so, what we're doing is we're incentivizing our best teachers to work in the toughest schools. We're investing in English language learners. And we're putting in all the kinds of school improvement strategies that we know uh, will continue to make sure that Montgomery County Public Schools is one of the best districts in the country. Council President Rice stressed the fact that all council members were on board with this plan before it was presented to the schools and that the agreement was a collaborative effort from both sides. The council is scheduled to take final action on the entire budget proposal on May 22nd. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. This week, County Executive Ike Liggett announced the results of the 2014 Homeless Point in Time Survey. Turns out there is an 11.25% decrease in the number of homeless persons in Montgomery County. The results are in, and county officials credited the over 11% reduction in homelessness to the actions taken by county government and providers. The problem of homelessness is a year-round challenge, and we are attacking it. Through the efforts of our nonprofit partners, the county joined the National 100,000 Homeless Campaign last year, and we continue to find permanent housing for our most vulnerable homeless individuals. During the freezing early morning hours of January 29th, 41 volunteers walked the woods, metro stations, garages, and other locations known to house homeless individuals in order to get an accurate count. The final tally was 891, a substantial decrease from last year's count of 1,004. This number today, 891, at, during the point in time count on January 29th is the lowest number that we've recorded in Montgomery County since we began counting. And so we always want to be certain that where we are expending tremendous effort, as in the case of our Housing First program and the 100,000 Homes campaign, that this effort, both in dollars and in people's time, is achieving a real result and that's what we've seen here. Also back in November of last year, the county had another homeless count as part of a 100,000 homes campaign. Several of the medically vulnerable were placed under various programs. The snapshot is made up of people who are known to the homeless system. Doesn't always mean everyone is receiving services, but most people are. Most people are either in shelters 
or um, family shelters, single adult shelters, or in transitional shelters. All of them are included. And there are people out and about in the community, in tents, under bridges, in garages. Those are the people who we outreach but may or may not be accepting of services. So everybody who's known to the system is offered services. Some take advantage, most take advantage of it, some don't. The Homeless Point in Time survey is done annually by the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments, and it is conducted in jurisdictions throughout the region. Montgomery County's Women's Cancer Control Program will host an open house on Wednesday, May 28th, to provide information on services to low-income, uninsured women in the county. The open house will be held from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the program office located at 2424 Reedy Drive in Wheaton. The Women's Cancer Control Program provides free mammograms, clinical breast exams, and pap smears to women age 40 and older who live in the county and are low income. More than 400 owners and representatives from local businesses gathered in one room at the Bethesda North Marriott Hotel for the county's second annual awards ceremony to recognize small businesses for their contributions to the community. My MC Media's Valerie Bunk has a story. Valerie? I'm here in Bethesda, where Montgomery County is holding their second annual Small Business Awards, where local businesses were honored for their success and their commitment to the community. It was a crowded room at the North Bethesda Marriott, where the county executive kicked off an event honoring the accomplishments of 11 local businesses and thanking more than 33,000 small businesses in the county for their service to the community. We thank them for driving the economy, growing jobs, and being an important part of our community. This annual event is very special to all of us. We are celebrating and supporting our local small business, which is the top priority for our administration. This year, the county's Department of Economic Development, which heads the event, added three categories to the award ceremony, including nonprofit, veteran owned company, and hospitality company of the year. Yeah, we're very fortunate to have won this award. Having grown up in Montgomery County, attended public school in Montgomery County, graduated from the University of Maryland, very proud to now be involved in a business in Montgomery County. For the founder of TCS Associates, which provides assistive technology and interpretive services for people with disabilities, says the award means the world to her and her staff. I'm absolutely thrilled and honored. This means so much to me because I've worked so hard for 32 years. Oh wow, this has just been a wonderful opportunity. I have a wonderful company and a wonderful team of people. I couldn't possibly do it without them. We've seen tremendous growth and also uh, the, the exposure uh, and really being able to delve into a lot of other avenues uh, of business that we haven't celebrated before. The event's keynote speaker, who started her own company in the basement of her Montgomery County oh, home right. in the 1980s, gave her tips for success. Always believe in yourself. You have to love what you do. Definitely be willing to take risks and never be afraid. Go to our website at mymcmedia.org for a complete list of winners. For County Report this week, I'm Valerie Bonk. And now we're going underground. The Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission gave a tour of its bi-county water tunnel. Public officials and members of the media were able to descend 160 feet to visit the tunnel. Everyone got a safety briefing before going down the 160-foot shaft in a cage that was lowered by a construction crane. Work on this project began in the summer of 2009 and is expected to be completed and operational in 2015. Well, summer is just around the corner and there is plenty to do for our young adults and children. The county's Department of Recreation has made available its guide for summer programs and registration is officially opened, offering a wide range of classes designed to help participants stay active and have fun. Registration is available by mail or fax, online or in person at the Montgomery County Recreation Administrative Offices on Randolph Road in Silver Spring. For more information, visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash rec or call 240-777-6840. When we come back, the city of Rockville is getting ready for another hometown holidays celebration. We'll give you a preview of what's scheduled for this year.
And recent fires prompt the fire department to remind residents that smoke detectors must be in good working condition. Hi, my name is Hassan Mutazidi. I'm the Division Chief of Zoning and Site Plan Enforcement Division with Department of Permitting Services. Staying safe while at play, at home, or in our community is the main goal of the county's Department of Permitting Services. Our Zoning and Site Plan Enforcement Division inspects commercial pools and playground equipment to make sure that they are built in accordance to the site plan. Playground equipment needs a secure structure and an area free of obstacles. Even low-hanging branches can cause accidents. The Department of Permitting Services keeps playgrounds and commercial pool areas safe by inspecting the area and enforcing the site plans. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigeli. It's that time of the year again. Rockville is gearing up to host the best party this side of the Chesapeake, hometown holidays. Hometown Holidays um, takes place over Memorial Day weekend and offers uh, more than 30 free musical performances. Um, we've got genres from country and reggae, Irish, polka, Latin. Um, there's really a, a musical flavor for just about everybody. So we're really excited to offer a variety of music um, to those that come out to our event. If the music selection isn't enough to convince you, Hometown Holidays also features rides, games, and the chance to sample some local restaurants. The event is um, family friendly. Um, families can bring um, their kids out and uh, we've got an area for amusements and entertainment for the kids. Um, and we also have a taste of Rockville where guests can taste bites from local Rockville restaurants. I'm here at Rockland's Barbecue where we're taking an early look at some of the businesses that will be featured in a taste of Rockville. Owner John Sneedon says Rockland specializes in real barbecue with real ingredients. We have our barbecue pork spare ribs. We have uh, barbecue beef ribs as well, and then uh, whole barbecue chicken. And it's these barbecue chickens then that we remove the skin and pull the meat off, and that's what we make our full barbecue chicken out of. And then we have a couple of the salads. Uh, if it's uh, warm weather like we're having, we'll probably do our fresh cucumber salad. It has red onion and fresh mint in a raspberry vinaigrette, and then that's our coleslaw, which has a uh, red and green cabbage, as well as uh, fresh peas, carrots, and then we also add uh, tarragon vinegar and caraway seed and cumin seed. Be sure to stop by Hometown Holidays this year for entertainment, great food, and the chance to help a city charity. For more information, go online to rockvillemd.gov slash hometown holidays. There have been several house fires this year and the county's fire and rescue department would like to remind you to check the batteries on your smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors to ensure that they are working properly. Home fires injure and kill hundreds every year. Smoke alarms that are properly installed and maintained can play a vital role in reducing fire death and injuries. Firefighters are available to visit your house to make sure your smoke detectors are working properly. In addition, the department has some smoke alarms that can be given to residents at no cost. To schedule your smoke alarm inspection, call 311. When we come back, we take you to a folk music concert at Montgomery College. And residents in Tacoma Park go for a run to raise funds for pedestrian safety. We'll be right back. Election Day is fast approaching. Is your voter registration accurate and up-to-date? Has your name or address changed? Go to 777vote.org or call 240-777-VOTE to check your current registration. Deadline is June 3rd at 9 p.m. If you can't make it to the polls on Election Day or during early voting, absentee ballots are available now. Just go to our website and submit an application. Remember, your time, your voice, your vote.
Welcome back to Canva Report this week. I'm Lorna Fagelli. Highland Elementary School students recently performed a concert at their school, but this was no ordinary recorder recital. MCPS TV has a story. Fourth graders from Highland Elementary School in Silver Spring had a unique opportunity to rehearse and perform a concert with a trio of professional musicians. This memorable residency program is being offered at 12 MCPS elementary, middle, and high schools as part of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra's Orc Lab program. Funding for Orc Lab is provided by the BSO at Strathmore and its donors. I love this Org Lab program because it's not that we're just in a big concert hall. We come into the classroom. These students are arm's length away from us. They get to see these instruments up close. You get this personal one-on-one -on -one attention between the musicians and the students. Today was the culmination of a five-visit residency program where we slowly introduced reading music, performing music, and culminating today with an ensemble performance, working together as a community. Performing music together is a very personal experience, and it was really neat seeing the students connecting with the musicians and learning about them as people, and the musicians learned about the children as well. I've also grown as a music teacher by watching how these musicians interact with the students. Sandy Gerster, one of the teaching musicians from this ensemble mentoring program, discussed how music can have a profound impact on students. Even a child who maybe struggles with other aspects of his or her life, music is something that's completely separate from all of that, and if they can find some joy in that, I think it just enhances the entire person, and I think it's important. Students commented about their experiences with the Orc Lab program. I got to play with the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. It made me feel more about music. It's about creativity. You never give up until you get it, and then it ends up being very beautiful music. It was exciting. I was nervous in the beginning, but it turned out really well. I liked hanging out with the Baltimore Symphony, and I like playing their recorder and the stage. I like being in the spotlight. Sheila K. Adams, 2013 National Endowment of the Arts National Heritage winner, recently came to Montgomery College to talk to students and to give a public concert. Danielle Stesky has the details. Sheila K. Adams is a seventh-generation ballad singer, musician, and storyteller. Her family descended from the Scottish and English settlers who arrived in western North Carolina and have been living in Madison County since 1698. Sheila K. began singing as a child, learning songs from relatives. Come in, come in, my old true love and spend this night with me for i've got a bed it's a very fine bed and i'll give it up for thee the i'll give it up for thee sheila k plays the banjo using the claw hammer style she picked up the banjo at the age of eight and has been playing for over 50 years gonna hit your logan in the front and morgan in behind I'm going down that rocky road to see that gal of mine. At Montgomery College, Sheila Kay met with the students from the three campuses to talk about her cultural knowledge, expertise, and music. One of the really critical things to who we are as a college is our academic excellence. And it's not only the quality of the education that we offer our students, but also the high quality of the co-curricular learning opportunities that the college also supports. What more important way of showing this than to have someone of Sheila K. Adams' caliber come to the college, present at all three campuses, give a public concert to the entire community. experience goes beyond Montgomery College. This summer, Montgomery scholars and Renaissance scholars will be spending two weeks at the Swannanoa Gathering in Asheville, North Carolina. Many of them will be taking classes with Sheila K. Adams. 
for a county report this week in Rockville. I'm Denia Wisteski. The fifth annual Tacoma Park Safe Route to Schools 5K Challenge was a huge success. It's a fun, family-oriented community event that includes a series of races from adult to youth. Proceeds from the event are used for health and pedestrian safety educational programs at five local schools. Tacoma Park Elementary, Piney Branch Elementary, East Silver Spring Elementary, Rolling Terrace Elementary, and Tacoma Park Middle School. Well, it seems that anywhere you go these days in Montgomery County, you're sure to pass a runner. My MC Media's Sonia Burke recently interviewed two local coaches who are sharing their passion for this popular sport by helping train area runners of all abilities and experience. Running is on the rise nationally, and that's certainly true right here in Montgomery County. I'm at North Farm Park where a group of runners are meeting weekly for training runs. Push. Lisa Reichman and Julie Sapper are local coaches who over the years have trained hundreds of runners in Montgomery County. On this day, they're leading a group of runners whose goal is to finish a 5K. It's really to get people who've never run before or who haven't run in many years back on track running. We start with run-walk intervals. It's very low-key, low intimidation factor, and we take baby steps up. Um, as you saw today, they're running eight minutes, walking two minutes, but we started running two minutes walking two minutes. So um, the goal is to get them to a 5K. I started with the group uh, back in the fall. I wanted to run a 5K with my daughter. I think in the, in the past running was perceived only for athletes and it wasn't perceived as accessible. People would say, I'm not a runner. But the definition of running is anyone who runs, it doesn't matter what speed you run and what distance you run, whether you run 5Ks or a marathon or beyond, you're a runner. And I think that intimidation factor has definitely decreased over the years, especially in Montgomery County, between all the running trails and paths, the number of runners out and about, all different shapes and sizes. I think it's made the running community more welcoming to more people. Although the coaches say their work is to safely train and inspire their runners, they say their runners often inspire them. The one thing that we really believe in is the quote on the back of our shirts that we provide all of our runners, which is, do a little more each day than you think you possibly can. What's inspiring is watching people who didn't think, don't have a natural ability to run or don't, you know, don't, it doesn't come easy to them, really push through that and mm -hmm. get beyond their, um, the mental blocks and accomplish, um, accomplish what they thought they, they couldn't. And it's really been neat for us to see. We have a lot of people who started in a program like this who are now running marathons. Absolutely. You can find out more about the Run Farther and Faster training programs online. For County Report This Week, I'm Sonia Burke. When we come back, we take you to a farm where horses are helping individuals with disabilities. And the city of Tacoma Park unveils a new public statue. Stay with us. May is Building Safety Month. Hi, I'm Steve Thomas with the Department of Permitting Services. It's important to make sure that all buildings are safe. That's why during the month of May, Permitting Services is offering to give you a free safety inspection of your existing deck. Don't let this happen to you. Protect your family. Call 311 for your free inspection today. Welcome back to Cadre Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili. With the help of horses, students at Great and Small and Voids are learning how to walk again through therapeutic riding lessons led by specialty trained instructors. My MC Media's Valerie Bunk visited the farm in Montgomery County. He traveled with his family from Ecuador to the U.S. when he was a teenager. Born with cerebral palsy, David and his family were in search of therapies and medical treatments to help him walk and navigate his daily life. Therapeutic riding was his ticket to improvement. I'm able to uh, sometimes um, be walking around my house without a, without using braces or without using without using the sticks around my house. Um, before I couldn't do that. David is one of more than 50 students who take therapeutic riding lessons each week at Great and Small, using the movement of the horse to train and strengthen their muscles. The motion that the person's pelvis goes through when they're sitting on a horse is the same motion that your pelvis goes through when you're walking. So for someone with a physical need, 
you're strengthening the same muscles. The nonprofit program operates on property donated by the county and is dependent on donations and rider fees to keep running. The horses themselves are either donated or on lease from their owners. Zeke is one of eight horses here at Great and Small in Boyd's trained specially for therapeutic riding. Therapy sessions are run with the help of close to 100 volunteers who spend time preparing and assisting riders during lessons. I've sidewalked or assisted with a couple of kids that at first you almost had to hold them in the saddle and toward the end they were sitting up straight. We have parents who come in and say, my kid is walking now and they weren't walking until we started riding. So it's it's incredible. For David, he's grateful for the opportunity to try something new and grow in the process. It has been um, a joyful experience for me because um, I haven't had this opportunity, the same opportunity in my country. For more information about the program, visit their website at greatandsmallride.org. For County Report This Week, I'm Valerie Bonk. And now let's meet our pet of the week with Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society. Kathy? This is Kathy Stanhope with the pet of the week at Montgomery County Humane Society and I am here with Tippy. Tippy is a lapful. This is a lot of cat and he's great though. He really is a wonderful affectionate lap cat. So visit him at the shelter on Goody Drive or give us a call at 240-252-2555 or visit Tippy on the web at mchumane.org. The city of Tacoma Park officially lives up to its nickname, Azalea City, after officials unveil a new sculpture along Piney Branch Road. Tamika Smith reports. Tacoma Park residents heading into the city along Piney Branch Road will notice something a little different along their way, an Azalea sculpture dedicated to their city. What got incorporated into this sculpture is just wonderful to have Azalea City, to have the overall sculpture be Azalea's, to have the map of the city within the middle of it and the representation of the six wards of the city. This $15,000 sculpture took Howard Connolly about three months to create. Connolly's no stranger to working around the Washington metropolitan area, but says after about 20 years, this is the best project thus far. And this is the first time they've built a big public art sculpture that has been bought by a, a city. When I was a kid, I won a pony at a, for a drawing contest. I lived in Colorado, and uh, they were giving away a pony to the first person that colored in this hot air balloon. And from that point onward, at nine, I thought it was going to be easy, and I'm 50 now. Residents, business owners, and city officials unveiled a new highlight of the city on May 8th. It sits on the intersection of Piney Branch Road and Flower Avenue. This new azalea sculpture is not only beautiful to look at, but also a sign that revitalization is coming to this neighborhood. This sculpture isn't the first piece of public art in the city, but Jared Smith, city councilman for Ward 5 in Tacoma Park, says art in his ward is rare. And I am looking at this as like the catalyst so people can see that the city really cares about our ward. And by 2015, construction is going to start where we're going to put a new sidewalk on the eastern side of the street. We're going to put rain gardens on. The Azalea sculpture is the beginning of public art projects that will be installed this summer. Tacoma Park officials say details are still getting finalized, but residents will have more art projects to look forward to around town. For County Report This Week, I'm Tamika Smith. The 2014 growing season is underway, and that means our county's farmers markets are now open for business. For a list of Montgomery County farmers markets, their locations, and hours of operation, visit mygreenmontgomery.org. With that, we close this edition of County Report This Week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. We leave you today with some images of beautiful tulips in full bloom at Brookside Gardens. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for joining us.